Heat is one of the best crime dramas ever made. It's one of the best bank heist movies ever made, if not the absolute best. It's one of my favorite movies that I've ever watched. It's one of my personal favorite movies of all time. This is my favorite Al Pacino movie. This is also my favorite Robert De Niro movie. And all the years and all the crazy things that those guys have done in their careers, Heat is my favorite performance from both of them. I like this movie more than Taxi Driver. I like it more than Goodfellas. I like it more than The Godfather Part 1 and 2. I like it more than Scarface. I like it more than Raging Bull. You get the idea. I am pretty biased towards this movie. This movie is directed by Michael Mann. You might remember him as the guy behind the classic 1980s TV show Miami Vice. And while this movie certainly isn't as flashy as Miami Vice, it's got tons of style. Michael Mann really likes those long lenses. He really likes to soak up the frame with just the actor's face. And everything in the background is more or less just supposed to remain out of focus. He does this a lot in Collateral. He does it a lot here in this movie. I think it's a style that's awesome. I, I think it looks great. It's not claustrophobic. It actually in my opinion, adds more to the frame because you can see some of the geography of what's behind the actor, but you can tell it's super obscured. It's not the focus. The actor is the focus. I know it seems like such a standard, basic idea, but when you use a long lens to film that way, it, it does something that most movies never do. Some people might be annoyed by that. I think it looks great. Uh, the first thing I want to mention about this movie is that it's not kidding around. It's two hours and 50 minutes long, but please don't let that scare you. This is a big story. This is a a movie with a lot of different moving pieces, a lot of different characters, and it has to take its time and develop all those characters so that the movie can have the impact that it deserves at the end. In this movie, Robert De Niro leads a team of elite bank robbers, really professional guys. They are not messing around. You can tell that they've been a close-knit group for some time. They pulled off a lot of scores together, and they don't take risk. You know, they take smart jobs. They're very methodical about what they do. They plan everything out. Al Pacino is playing a detective. He's someone who's constantly fighting for control. At work, he has control. At home, he doesn't. He has no control there. And he finds himself constantly catching up in life. You know, he's never fully living life. He's, he's so married to his work in a way that it's, it's making everything around him kind of crash and burn, but he doesn't care about that. He doesn't care about the mess he leaves behind. He's the true hard-boiled detective I know everything I've kind of said about these characters so far makes them sound like cliches or tropes. Uh, in a way they are, but I think what's important about Heat is the way that it explores those characters. So they are very three-dimensional. This movie really explores the sociology of a criminal and a cop and how they are two sides of the same coin. When you put them together in a room, they're not all that different. I don't know the exact time code, but it takes almost about 45 minutes in this movie for Robert De Niro and Al Pacino's characters to meet. And so many layers are opened up in this movie during that scene. It's just two people having an honest conversation about why they do the things they do and why they're not going to stop. And they also see that they have a lot in common. They're both very determined individuals. They're both highly skilled at their job and they're both desperately missing something in life. So yeah, this movie's long and it's got a lot going on, but once you're locked in, this movie's a really exciting ride. I love the opening truck robbery of this movie that sets everything up. It's the first moment where Vincent catches a lead on who this gang might be. It's the first moment we see Robert De Niro act in a way that's rational, but questionable. <laughs> Robert De Niro does his best to be professional all the time. We kind of see this a little bit in his home life. His apartment has no furniture in it. It's clear that being at home or having a life at home outside of what he does every day, outside of his work, uh, doesn't interest him. I love that shot where he returns home. He looks out at the ocean. Everything's all blue. It's super moody. It's not subtle, you know, it's, it's used to show that he's, he's feeling very lonely deep inside. I mean, first off, it's beautiful, just look at it. And also, it's a really good piece of visual imagery, it's, it's visual storytelling. I mean, it's not subtle, but it, it doesn't have to be if it's executed right. Michael Mann was never accused of being subtle, and Al Pacino is calculated and determined. I love those moments where we get to see him working a crime scene and he's just riddling things off left and right, telling people to go do this, go here, check that. He's just, he's fast. He's always quick to the punch, he's on the money. You can tell that he's ready to move the second something goes down. And there's so many other characters in this movie, characters that I could go on and talk about, but I think the main piece is certainly Al Pacino and Robert De Niro. They're the main focus, they're the two characters in the movie that understand each other the most. But I did say this was a heist movie, so how's the action? Well, this is the best action movie ever made, in my opinion. That's debatable, obviously, everything is. But the bank heist scene in this movie is incredible. It's because of the build-up. This entire movie is building tension. Everything is leading up to this moment. Throughout the course of the movie, the gang's getting nervous because they know that they're being surveilled by the police. 
The cops are kind of itchy because they know the second something happens, they're going to go after them. It's this very conscious game of cat and mouse that's constantly building on itself, one scene after the other. Each scene's important, each scene adds to the drama, each scene adds to the tension that's being built. And when the heist finally goes down, the team doesn't just get stupid because they're taking a risk. They're, they're still smart, they're still very skilled at what they do, and the heist goes off almost without a hitch. It's not until they get outside the bank that things go south. As soon as that first shot is fired and it cracks through the buildings, it's this release of chaos that goes on for nine minutes. I love the fact that there's no music during this part. I love it when a film is so confident in itself, so confident in its sound design and its capabilities and its action set piece that it doesn't feel compelled to fill the void with some, you know, jazzed up soundtrack that's gonna move the scene forward. Music's great in movies, obviously, but sometimes you don't need it. In this scene, the gunfire does the talking. In terms of bank robbery shootouts in movies, this is the best one. I don't think that's even up for debate. In terms of action scenes in a movie, this is my favorite one of all time. And the behind the scenes stuff for this is just crazy. How all the gunfire isn't post-production, how it's actually the actors firing blanks and letting those shots echo through the buildings. There's so much fear in the air. There's so much chaos in the air. You can see the people running away for cover, the glass shattering, the blockade of cop cars sitting down at the intersection just firing on the gang, the slow-mo shot of Robert De Niro, that moment where he notices things aren't gonna get any better and he just blasts the windshield. He doesn't care who's getting hurt. This isn't just a mindless action set piece. It's supposed to flesh out the characters. One of the ways for Robert De Niro and the gang that it fleshes them out is showing that when their back's up against the wall, when push comes to shove, they don't care about killing people. They're gonna do it. And for Al Pacino, when he's right on your tail, when he's chasing you, he's not gonna stop. He's not gonna think about what's the right way to do things as a cop or the clean way to do things. He's going to get you. <laughs> I think the runtime is really deserved, and I think as a viewer, you're actually rewarded for it because you're, you've been sitting on the edge of your seat for the last hour wondering what's going to happen to these characters. You're interested in Robert De Niro, you're interested in Al Pacino, you kind of like both of them in a way. And then this bank heist just caps it all off, and for the last hour of this movie, you're in this weird haze of seeing everything fall apart. You're watching these characters become more and more desperate to complete their personal goals, their mission. And they start making those intelligent mistakes. They start taking risks that they normally wouldn't take. I know this sounds like basic drama 101, but a lot of movies don't take the time to do this, and Heat does, and it really pays off. I love the use of locations in this movie. I love the fact that they went to real spots in LA to shoot this movie. It starts to all feel real. It feels less like a movie, just the way that they, they shot on location, the way the practical effects are used, the fact that they're actually firing blanks during that gunfight. I mean, the presentation of this movie is just off the charts. One of the things that blows my mind is that this movie is from 1995. In my opinion, this movie looks like it could be released today. That's how good it looks. And it's from its style, you know? Obviously it's shot on film, most movies aren't shot that way anymore. But this movie was very ahead of its time in the way that it's shot. There's so many pieces of media that have taken lessons from Heat. Even if you haven't seen Heat, you've seen the cultural impact of Heat in some way. You've either watched The Dark Knight, or you've watched The Town, or you've played Grand Theft Auto V. There's been something in your life that you've probably seen or heard of before that is borrowing from Heat in some way. That's not a jab at any of those other things. I like all those other things. But there's something to be said about Heat, how it came first, how it's the illegitimate father of all of that. How none of those things really could have existed without Heat. It's it's really impressive to me. I love the music in this movie so much. Elliot Goldenthal's theme is perfect. It's perfect when it needs to be sad and kind of dour. It's great when it needs to be a little bit more up and building that tension. The use of licensed music in this movie is perfect. I love both tracks that Moby produced for this movie. I understand that Moby being a producer on a soundtrack for a movie uh, is a very 1995 to 2005 thing to do, but for this movie, it, it worked back then and I think it still holds up today, I'll say that much. I think that's what blows my mind the most. Nothing in this movie feels outdated. And as for the ending in this movie, I can't really talk about it because I want you guys to watch this movie. I don't want to give it away. This is my favorite ending to a movie ever. It is perfect. The ending is perfect. So why did I pick Heat? You know, it's it's not an unpopular movie. It's got a huge cast, a very popular cast. 
full of famous actors, full of very prestigious actors. This movie didn't flop, it was certainly important when it came out, I think it's still important today. I guess I feel like when I talk to people from my generation, maybe they've heard about Heat, but they haven't seen it because it was before our time. And for that reason, I think it's important to bring up because this movie's great. <laughs> and like I was talking about earlier, we've seen the aftermath in our media, we've seen how many things derive something from this movie. and. I think it's always good to look back and see where it all came from, where the inspiration started. I guess for me personally, Heat is a movie about realizing what's important in life, realizing that maybe what you spent all your time doing isn't what you should be doing, and then looking back, stepping away and, and asking yourself, do I have enough time left to do the things I want to do, or have I wasted all my time? You know, the characters in this movie are a little bit older, so they're getting to the age where they start to ask those questions. But I think everyone, no matter what age you are, kind of asks those questions. Is it worth it to chase something my whole life and never be fulfilled, or should I just give up on that? Maybe you guys won't read into this movie the same way I do, but those are the questions that I think it's it's asking. For characters like Neil McCauley, Rob De Niro's character, he's, he's afraid to admit that he's alone, or that he's lonely. I think a lot of people go through that. For characters like Vincent Hanna, Al Pacino's character, he's asking himself, am I a good person, or am I just spending all my time catching the people that are worse than me? So Heat is available on a couple different platforms. It used to be on Netflix. It's not on Netflix anymore. I messed up. I'm sorry. Maybe you can find it on Amazon for kind of cheap. Find it on the internet somewhere kind of cheap and watch it. Uh, if you got three hours to kill, like I said, yeah, it's long, but please don't let that scare you. It's amazing. Uh, just keep this one in the back of your mind. Maybe you'll remember it one day and have the time to watch it. It's amazing. If I'm there and I gotta put you away, I won't like it. If it's between you and some poor bastard whose wife you're gonna turn into a widow, you are going down. What if you do got me boxed in? And I gotta put you down. Cause no matter what, you will not get in my way. But I will not hesitate. Not for a second. Look at me. Look at me. Give me all you got! Listen. Give me all you got! We still got me. Maybe some time. God, God, what do we got? What do we got? Remember Jimmy McElwain on the yard used to say you wanna be making moves on the street, have no attachments. Allow nothing to be in your life that you cannot walk out on in 30 seconds flat if you spot the heat around the corner. They dumped all our surveillance yeah. at the same time, 9 p.m. I had coffee with Macaulay half an hour ago! Yeah, it was like you said. All I am is what I'm going after. I'm not what you want, Justine. 